Any good Rails developer really has to be a good Ruby developer first, since for the majority of the time, quite a bit of it, 80 or 90 percent, of the work we do in a Rails app, we're writing in Ruby. We're going to go through in these next few videos some examples, some exercises, some tips on how to become a better Ruby developer. So I'm looking at the working files for this chapter, and specifically the directory Ruby. You'll have these files, my examples, the exercises and solutions to the exercises. First off, how do you run Ruby? If I, in my terminal window, have navigated to that directory, the Ruby directory, a couple ways. You can use IRB, which is Interactive Ruby, where you're just typing out Ruby commands onto the command line. But as most of the work you do is going to be more than just a simple line, it makes sense to actually just run Ruby from a file. So I can say Ruby hello world.rb. And that causes something to happen. In this case, this. On line one, I have put space quote hello world quote. All that's doing is printing back to the screen, followed by a line break, the string hello world. I could have used single quotes, could have used double quotes. We'll talk a little bit later as we talk about strings in Ruby, the differences between the two. But for now, this suffices. When I execute Ruby space hello dash world dot RB, I'm asking the Ruby interpreter to read the contents of that file and execute the commands. Again, in this case, a very simple command. I could do a little more. I could store that hello world into a variable. So the str variable on line one gets the value hello world, and then I put that to the screen. So hello world variable. All I'm getting is hello world, but that'll suffice for this example. Comments. Good code, of course, has comments, both as an indication to your teammates or just a reminder for you later on what's going on. A couple different kinds of comments. You'll see the first more often with that hash character. That's a single line comment. So here I have a Ruby comment on line one and then a multi-line comment. Notice the equals begin and equals end on line five and 10 respectively. Anything between that is going to be commented out. So the operative code is there on line three setting a variable x to have value 3, and on line 12, putting that to the screen. Let's run that. So Ruby comments.rb, and I print to the screen the value 3. That's the execution of line 12 in this file. I can look at a simple expression, say x equals 1 and y equals 2 on lines 1 and 2, respectively. And there in line 3, I'm saying print instead of puts. I want to print out to the screen x plus y equals, but I don't want to follow it with a line break. So print is going to print to the screen without a line break. Puts is going to print to the screen with a line break. So on line three, I'm going to be asking the literal string x plus y equals to be printed to the screen. And on line four, I'm going to print to the screen, in this case with a line break, puts, the evaluation of the expression x plus y, which should give me three. So if I do a Ruby simple dash expression dot rb, the first part of that statement that's printed to my terminal screen, x plus y equals, comes from the print statement on line three. The value three in the terminal window comes from the line of code on line four. And of course, I could change that to show x equals, say, four, run that again, and I'd get a different result. Lastly, we deal with objects in Ruby. Everything is an object. So here's a couple different cases. A common convention in Ruby that you'll see as you're reading the Ruby docs for, say, string or other sorts of classes, some of the built-in functions, the built-in methods in the language that we'll use over and over again. Let's take a look through this simple-object.rb file. There on line one, I set a variable name to have value Brian. On line two, I say name.upcase, which as you'd expect would make the value uppercase. And then I print it to the screen on line three. You do a similar thing on lines 5, 6, and 7. You'll notice they're exactly the same, except for on line 6, there's that exclamation mark at the end of the upcase method. The dot in both lines 2 and 6 says, apply upcase to name. That is, apply the functionality or whatever's happening in upcase, that method. Apply it to name with the dot operator. But on line 6, you notice that exclamation mark. That is, make whatever name is an uppercase string but also save it, make it change. Whereas on line two, we're making name uppercase, but we're not saving the value in name. So when we print this to the screen, we should see Brian lowercase and Brian uppercase. Simple object. I get Brian lowercase and then Brian uppercase. 
you'll see that lots and lots of those methods have both a regular, a read-only version, and an exclamation mark, a mutating version that save and preserve the change to the object the method is applied to. You'll also see methods in Ruby that return a Boolean that is a true or false value. The convention is that they end in a question mark. We'll see a little more of that down the road.